Hey y'all, welcome back to Ramblin' Mama. I'm Lisa. If you're new here and you like deep dives on true crime, please consider subscribing. Today's video is part five of the Menendez brothers. And please be on the lookout. I'm always doing polls in the community. I like getting your feedback on what you want me to cover. I also promise I'm gonna be doing more recent cases. Like I released an episode last week on the Idaho Four, and I'm gonna continue that series. And also I asked y'all in a poll if you were interested in me doing a series on woo-woo stuff, like near-death experiences. And it looks like most of you are open to it, but I just want to assure you, if you're only here for true crime, I'm not going to stop doing that. This other thing would only be in addition to that. So in today's video, we're going to cover the second trial as well as the punishment phase. And I believe the next video might be the last in the series on this case where I bring you up to speed on what's happening with the Menendez brothers today. Just a reminder that I'm not an expert. This is just based on my own research and the research of Molly Robichaux. Thank you again, Molly, for all your hard work. Please remember to be respectful to each other in the comments. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Judge Weisberg, who presided over the first trial, set a retrial date for the brothers, which was postponed several times until August 1995, when the second trial finally began. And if you'll recall, the murders were committed in August of 1989, so that's how many years it's been. David Kahn, a veteran Los Angeles County Assistant District Attorney, replaced the prosecutors from the first trial but Leslie Abramson stayed on to defend Eric and Jill Lansing no longer represented Lyle. Instead, she was replaced by Charles Gessler. The judge ruled that this time the trial would not be televised like it was the first time. He felt like it exposed the jurors to too much commentary and information regarding the case. On October 11th, 1995, opening statements began in the second trial and this time, both brothers were tried together. Another noteworthy difference about this second trial is Judge Weisberg limited the amount of witnesses regarding the abuse. And so in the first trial, there were over 100 witnesses that pertained to the essay. And in this second trial, it was limited to 64. In his opening statement, Prosecutor David Kahn had the same argument for motive that the prosecutors in the first trial had. He said that the brothers were greedy and they were hoping to get their hands on their parents' fortune as soon as possible. Leslie Abramson, on the other hand, argued that the brothers murdered Jose and Kitty due to mind-numbing, adrenaline-pumping fear that their mother and father would harm them for threatening to expose the family secrets. On December 6th, Eric began the first day of his 15-day testimony. However, during the third day of his testimony, the judge claimed several allegations of early childhood abuse were irrelevant, and the judge limited how much of the abuse Eric could talk about while on the stand. And I wanna ask y'all, what do you think about this? Do you think this was a fair ruling? Do you think his childhood abuse isn't relevant? What do you think? Eric testified that Jose had told Eric that he was written out of his will for not living up to Jose's expectations. But the prosecutor wanted to point out to the jury that Eric was a liar. He reminded them that Eric lied to his family and friends and police for six months after murdering his parents. He attacked Eric's claims that Jose forced on him at the age of 18. The prosecutor said Eric had a car and money and he could leave whenever he wanted to. He asked Eric why he wouldn't just enlist in the army if he wanted to escape the abuse. And Eric claimed even the army couldn't protect him from Jose who was the most powerful person that he had ever known. On his final day on the stand, on January 9th, 1996, Eric said that he and his brother Lyle did not make up claims of childhood abuse to try and avoid murder convictions. On January 12th, 1996, Charles Gessler, Lyle's attorney, changed the direction of his defense. 
He told the court that he planned to argue that Lyle killed his parents in the heat of passion because he was overwhelmed with fear and anger. During the first trial, Lyle testified on his behalf about the abuse, but he didn't want to take the stand on the second trial. Lyle, who y'all remember, came across as very sympathetic in the first trial. Well, apparently he had a conversation with his friend, which was recorded and then handed to the prosecutor. And in this conversation, Lyle states to his friend that he snowed the jury with his testimony in the first trial about the abuse. So I think the decision was made to keep Lyle from taking the stand because if he took the stand, then the prosecutor would be able to legitimately bring up that phone recording and use it against Lyle. And certainly that would undermine a lot of credibility. And without Lyle taking the stand, he couldn't use the same line of defense as he had in the first trial because he couldn't testify to the essay. So I want to ask y'all, based on your knowledge of seeing Lyle's testimony and everything you know about this case so far. Why do you think Lyle said that to his friend? Do you think he was covering for some shame that he felt and trying to pretend like the abuse never happened? Or do you think he truly was not abused and he was confiding to a good friend that he pulled the wool over the jury's eyes? What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. So Charles Gessler, Lyle's attorney, didn't call a lot of witnesses to the stand for Lyle. He sort of just piggybacked on Leslie Abramson's witnesses that she was calling to the stand. This in, in and of itself makes me feel very uneasy for Lyle. It feels like without his testimony and without a lot of witnesses being called for him, not just for Eric, it's starting to feel like he, like this is a really weak case for Lyle. Towards the end of the defense's case, Judge Weisberg ruled that six witnesses from the first trial's testimonies were irrelevant to the second trial and would not be allowed to testify. He ruled that the parents alleged psychological mistreatment of Lyle and Eric was irrelevant. I'm sorry to ask you so many questions already, but what do you think of this? Do y'all remember Dr. Vickery from the first trial? He's the psychiatrist that saw Eric and I believe he was the first one that Eric started opening up to about the essay after many weeks of them working together in session. Dr. Vickery was only allowed to testify during the penalty phase of the second trial. During his testimony, it was revealed that the defense and prosecution had different copies of Dr. Vickery's notes. Vickery later admitted that Leslie Abramson told him to eliminate some portions of his notes, which initially Vickery refused to do. Leslie, however, told him he would either do what she said or he wouldn't be allowed to testify, so Vickery complied. He testified that portions of his notes that Leslie told him to eliminate were anything that had to do with Eric's supposed homosexuality. If you'll remember from the first trial, that's what the prosecution argued. One such part of these notes was that Eric had told Vickery that he had had homosexual contact at the ages of 11 and 12 with another boy. And after breaking up with his girlfriend, Kirsten Smith, at the age of 16, he had had a homosexual relationship with another young man that included oral and, we'll just say, behind. Something else that was a part of Dr. Vickery's redacted notes was a section where Dr. Ozeal had warned Jose and Kitty that their sons were a danger to them. Lastly, unfortunately, Dr. Vickery also admitted that his notes were altered prior to the first trial as well. During the prosecutor's closing arguments, his tone was really belittling and sarcastic. He attacked Eric's testimony and said that it was self-serving and filled with inconsistencies. He urged the jury to reject Eric's claim of abuse and to find Lyle and Eric Menendez guilty of first degree murder. Leslie Abramson gave three days of closing arguments. Y'all, you have to love this attorney for her doggedness. Hey y'all, I'm editing now and I just wanted to make the clarification that I'm not advocating for the dishonest techniques that Leslie Abramson used. 
um, it's really disturbing that she was putting pressure on these experts to alter their notes or records in any way. I'm not saying I'm a fan of that. I'm just remarking on if you watch the way that she is, particularly in cross examinations, I really admire her style and like I keep saying, her tenacity. You remember seeing the clips of her that I put in the video from the first trial. She is, <laughs> I just, I feel like she's just a dog with a bone, you know, and you can't mess with her. But anyway, she said that the prosecutor, David Kahn, only wanted to win this case for political reasons. She was trying to point out to the jury that the LA district attorney's office was under enormous pressure to win a big case after they embarrassed themselves in the OJ Simpson trial and the lesser known, at least to me anyway, McMartin preschool trials. Charles Gessler's closing argument for Lyle was pretty low key. He attacked the prosecution's claims that the brothers killed their parents in order to get their hands on their money. He argued that Jose caused his own death by essaying his own sons, and Kitty caused her own death by failing to protect Lyle and Eric from their abusive father. On March 20th, the jury convicted both brothers on two counts of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. They also found special circumstances to the murder, which was lying in wait and multiple murder, meaning that Lyle and Eric were eligible for the death penalty. On March 26, 1996, the sentencing phase began for Lyle and Eric Menendez. During the penalty phase, a doctor of Eric's from 1990 admitted that he doctored his notes, again, under Leslie Abramson's direction. Under cross-examination, he admitted to omitting notes from sections which contained incriminating statements from Eric. For example, one statement made by Eric to his doctor stated that Jose's homosexual lover came to their Beverly Hills mansion two days before the murder and admitted Jose and Kitty planned on killing Lyle and Eric. However, Eric later told the doctor that this was a lie. On April 12th, the jury began to deliberate if the brothers should be sentenced to life in prison or if they should be put to death. Because Eric and Lyle didn't have a previous criminal record or at least a violent criminal record. Some jurors felt sympathetic towards them. They were sentenced to life in prison without parole and they were spared the death penalty. I've heard the second trial described as Judge Weisberg engineering a verdict, meaning his decision to exclude certain things, the information that he wouldn't allow into the second trial, was his way of engineering a verdict. But that's going to be it for me today. I want y'all to let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the second trial? Do you think it was fair that the SA and psychological abuse wasn't permitted as much? Do you think it's relevant or not? Do you think Judge Weisberg used this second trial to engineer a verdict? Tell me what you think in the comments below and I'll see y'all next time.